Hi friends, greetings, this is Patty Bennett. I am excited to be with you today to share some tips with this awesome Stampin' Up! Earthen Elegance Suite. This is a brand new suite in the new catalog that just released in May and I just think it's awesome and I received so many kind comments from you on this card. I had blogged this earlier this week. So we're going to talk about this suite, how to use all of the pieces and tips for making these pots. We are also going to be making this back fold fun fold card. This was new to me. This is something that I just saw in the last couple of weeks, and I wanted to share this with you because I started to just, to just do a blog post about this card, and I realized this needs a video because you really have to see how cool this card is in action to appreciate it. So we'll be making this. We'll be talking about these pots and this bundle and I will be answering any questions you have. So if you are watching live, welcome. This would be June 9th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. I am live just an hour early today than usual because I have something very special going on today. We'll get into that soon. So usually it's 11 o'clock. You can usually find me live here on Facebook at 11 a.m. Pacific time. But this replay will be available shortly after the live is done, as well as on my blog tomorrow, which is pattystamps.com. And it will also be on my YouTube channel. So on YouTube, you just search for Patty Bennett or Patty Stamps, and you would be able to find that. If you're joining in live, please say hi so that I know that you're here. I see Paula, I mean, excuse me, Polly, Linda. I read those like at the same time and Polly and Linda turned into Paula. So you are now one, one connected person. <laughs> I see Jen and Kathy, Nancy, Linda, Patricia. Hello, everybody. So happy that you are here. I think I logged in just about two minutes early. So before we get started, I'm going to give everybody a minute to find the live. Therefore, if you're watching a um, replay, please skip ahead so that you don't have to just wait through the next minute or so. Hi, Fonda and Julie and Barb and Paula. Hi, everybody. Welcome. So glad that you are here. So if you're just joining in today, we are going to be looking at this Earthen Elegance bundle and suite in the new Stampin' Up! catalog. I'll go over that in just a minute. We are going to be going over tips for creating these really cool pots that they're really super easy to make. You're you will probably be amazed at how simple they are to create. And we will be making this back fold, fun fold card. This is just the coolest design. And I'll show you the card that inspired me by Joanne Hewins. And then we will be making one and also going over how to do the pots. So welcome to Kathy, Janet, Jean, Fonda, Julie, Barb, hello everybody, welcome, so glad that you're here. I did have a couple weeks off for the Stampin' Up! trip in May, and then last week I just did an impromptu live, hope you were here for that, and today, this is so exciting, I am welcoming Sarah Douglas, the CEO of Stampin' Up! to our area. She's flying in right now. In fact, she is probably in the air as we speak. Well, almost. Not quite. She's probably boarding the plane right now. And she will be coming in. We will be having a business lunch together today. Tonight we have our bingo team event where we have bingo and crafting and dinner at a pizza place. So she'll be here for that. And tomorrow we have our all day summer soiree team event, as well as we've invited other demonstrators to attend. So you probably saw the ads for that over the past few months, but she is attending our event as part of the Stampin' Up! 35 for 35 event. And super 
fun to have Sarah be the one joining us for that. And we have been friends for many, many, many years through Stampin' Up! And I'm just delighted to have her with us. Uh, my partner and downline, Kirsten Del Rosario, is co-hosting these events with me. She's done uh, most of the the administrative work. Uh, she does all the registrations and the money and the ordering and the packaging. So I, I help in other ways. And then we are having these fun events. So that's what I'm doing later today. That's why I am on an hour early today. Hi, Cindy in Texas and Mary Ellen in rainy Montana. Yes, Stacy, it's so exciting. Next week, I will be blogging about it. So welcome, everybody who has joined in. I see you. I see all of your names here. Thank you so much for joining. So let's go ahead and get started. If you missed the beginning, my name is Patty Bennett, and I blog at pattystamps.com. I have been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for almost 28 years. So in less than two weeks, I'm celebrating 28 years as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I will be doing something fun on my blog, so you can watch for that. Today we are talking about the Earthen Elegance Suite from Stampin' Up! And if you have this new catalog, you've seen it, page 70 and 71. If you're like me, when you got to this page, when you opened your new catalog, you might have thought, number one, wow, this is really different for Stampin' Up! Number two, ah, oh, it looks a little overwhelming. And I sort of passed it by. I thought, mm, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to use this. But then what I taught myself to do with this particular suite was I just sort of blocked everything out except one sample. And I looked at just like one or two samples at a time. And I realized by just focusing on one or two samples at a time, how amazing this suite is. And I thought, I just know as soon as I get these stamps, I'm going to love playing with them. And I did. I absolutely thoroughly enjoyed playing with this. So we have our stamp set with matching dies. We have designer paper, and then we have this beautiful natural wavy trim. Now I do just want to point out if you get all excited and you think, oh, I can't wait, I need to go order this, I do have all these supplies listed on pattystamps.com today, so you can hop over there and shop. You will also see it under the YouTube description and on my blog tomorrow. But what I wanted to point out is this wavy trim is currently on back order, or unavailable. I guess technically they don't call it back order anymore. So it's currently unavailable, which means that the suite is unavailable. However, the rest of the supplies are available. So this is uh, June 9th, if you're catching me live. If you're watching this later on sometime in the future, then chances are these are available again. But I just didn't want you to be disappointed by clicking on the whole suite and saying, well, great, you know, she showed us how to use this and now I can't order it. But that's why. It's because of the trim. So you can still get the bundle. You can still get the paper. You can still get the sequins. You can get all of the ink and cardstock colors and all of the other supplies. So I just wanted to point that out in case it was frustrating because that can be. I understand that. Oh, Jean says, I completely ignored this suite. And I did at first as well. It just... It was overwhelming. It scared me just a little. I mean, I was intrigued, but I wasn't sure. <laughs> um, one thing, I, I'm just going to point this out right now, because otherwise I might forget to tell you. So, you know, on our stamp sets in the catalog, where it will show you this colored outline, and it just means that there's a die that goes with it. So we have these just sort of natural greenery, wheat, twigs, whatever you want to call them, right? That these do have a dye to go with it. And then if you're looking at the set, you might think, well, wait a minute, there's the two pots, but they don't have the outline. And I want to show you why. The pot dyes are just a tiny bit smaller. Can you see 
on either side and top and bottom, there's a tiny bit of image showing around these. So these do trim down the two pots a little bit more than the actual outline of the pot, but they are still meant to go together. And we'll look at that as we stamp and die cut. But I just wanted to point that out in case you were confused like I was at first. I had to contact Stampin' Up and say, well, what, what happened to these? They don't cut out perfectly and they're not meant to. They are meant to cut it a little bit smaller than the actual image. So just wanted to show that to you in case you might have been wondering yourself. All right, let's get going with the stamping and the cards. Just check to see if there were any questions about that. Uh, let's see. Oh, Louise said she's a little bit cold to this suite. Okay, I understand. So hopefully, 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 as we go through this today, we will. I will kind of change your mind or at least enlighten you and hopefully you'll at least be inspired and informed. Let's, let's say that. So we are going to make the back fold card. This one was on my blog just a couple of days ago, and it's just a very simple top fold with the circle focal point and some stamping and die cutting on the inside. And this one, I'm going to have to do a separate live for this at another time, because this would just be you know, you'd have to grab your sleeping bags and stay overnight if we did too many. But this one is a fun, I think it's called a peekaboo card. And I liked this idea and I wanted to try it with this suite. So this will have to be a separate time and a separate blog post, but you can watch for that at some point. So let's go over a couple of tips for stamping these pots. I want to show you how many I've just done several already. I just love this paper. I think this paper is thoroughly amazing. Here are the patterns in this Earthen Elegance package. They're 12 by 12 sheets. This is just a sampler. Gives you a bit of a, an overview of some of the patterns. And so you can see where I have stamped and die cut on lots of different patterns. And I really found that I loved stamping and die cutting these pots right on top of the patterned paper. The very first cards that I did with this, I stamped the pots on just regular cardstock, but I found that I really loved stamping on this paper and then die cutting them out. So let's just take this one first, and I'm inking in uh, Pretty Peacock, and let's just, it doesn't matter where you stamp, they're all going to turn out gorgeous. So do you see how we already have some really interesting shading happening with that, just by stamping on a color and a pattern? Very different than stamping on white or stamping on uh, just a solid color. So there's an example with that. And then I am going to grab, I think I'll get copper clay and ink onto this pattern. I loved this one. Look at the interesting patterns and color and variation you get when you stamp it onto that paper. Isn't that pretty? So gorgeous. Then let's grab the larger one. Um, I think I'll go a shade lighter. Let's do pecan pie. And there are so many ways to use this particular image. I'm going to show you a couple. Um, I'm wondering... I think... I'm going to show you, just deciding which way to do this. I'm going to show you, even if you have a smaller area, see how this went off the edge? I'm going to show you something you can do with just a smaller image with that. And then let's also do one with pecan. 
pecan pie, and actually we'll make that one even smaller. So if you just have a scrap, I'm going to show you something you can do with that. <laughs> Kathy says, I'll probably be adding it to my next order. <laughs> it is really beautiful. So the color palette I'll show you here. Pecan Pie, Copper Clay, Pebbled Path, Pretty Peacock coordinates with the paper. And it's funny because when I had this project on my blog, so many people said, oh, I love your color combo. And it's funny because I didn't make it up. I just took it straight out of the paper. So thank you for your compliments, but it wasn't my idea. I just went straight with what the Stampin' Up! designers had for us. <laughs> So then, here's something fun you can do. This is copper clay, and I'm going to grab my blending brush that I have for copper clay, get some ink on it, and I always kind of test it, just make sure there isn't too much. And I'm just going to go on the edges here. And do you see how leaving this lighter uh, makes it look like it's more rounded. So that's one thing I did. I'm going to also do it on this one right here. And then let's do, let's go like from the bottom or the top. I mean, this, this is going, this can be any, this is so interesting. My brain is like 20 steps ahead and I'm already thinking about what I want to do with these. <laughs> I don't know, call me crazy, but this this is just so fun. It's like paper dolls with pots. And that sounds a little weird, but you know what I mean, right? So let's do a little shading on this one. Where is my pretty peacock? Pretty peacock blending brush. So we'll just go again outside edge and when you're using blending brushes it is always better to build up your ink you don't want to go in and get this huge splotch so it's better to go over it a few times and darken 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 than to just get a blob so that's why I was just building and building do you see the lighter part right here so that's going to give this a more rounded appearance. This one's already pretty dark, but I think maybe I'll just try to darken it a little bit at the bottom, kind of like it's shadowed towards the bottom, and just a little on the sides. But this one really is pretty dark. I'm not sure that it's going to need a lot of shading. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And yeah, so then we'll die cut these and I want to show you all the fun different ways you can kind of mix and match and build these pots. You could also, if you didn't want to take time to actually die cut, these are super, super easy to just uh, cut by hand with scissors. It's, they're, they're not difficult at all. And then, let's see. So I know this goes off the edge, but trust me, we're, we're headed in a direction here and it will work. So talk amongst yourselves. Here's some samples while I die cut. I'm just going to turn around and die cut. You're probably wondering like what's what's with the partial pot but but there's a reason and I'm going to at the same time I'm going to use this little die so I'm going to show you what that is for
poke this one out. I know I usually try to have everything die cut ahead, but sometimes, I don't know about you, sometimes I really think it's important to see the whole process and to kind of learn about, about my, my thought process or how this actually works. So anyway, that's why we're die cutting live. I'll just do a couple more and then I have some already pre-done that we can play with. So those, those were the pieces out of that one. Plus I die cut this, so we're gonna, I'm gonna show you what to do with it. And then let's do, let's do this one since, since we stamped this. So I will, I don't know if you all love these. I love these little post-it flags for holding my dies down. And then I think let's do this one down here. I just love these. They come in this little pop-up container, so it's really easy to one-handed grab them. Okay, friends, here we are. So there's that one, that one, and that one. Check and see if you had any questions. Oh, Elisa loves this. Hi, Holly from South Dakota. Hello, everybody. Oh, good. Tanya says this is going on her June order. Awesome. I just want to put these back. I don't know about you, but losing a die is not fun. And it happens. And if I don't put things back pretty quickly... I, I really run the risk of losing them forever. Now, this piece, you might be thinking, wow, what the heck? So if you are familiar with the, these kind of earthen clay pots and whatnot, and I actually have this on my desk. It's been on my desk for over a decade. I use it to just put little scraps in, and then I dump it in my recycle bin. And you can see how the glazing and the color has like spilled over the edge. That's kind of like what this is. And I pre-cut, here we go, here's one. So do you see right out of this piece? That's what it would look like if you put the pot die on this piece. And you get that look of... Like, isn't this like, oh my gosh, let me move these so we can concentrate on this. Look at this. How amazing does that look? And then here's another one where it's kind of spilled over the edge. So I just have a bunch of them already cut. We're going to build some of these. I'm going to show you some different unique ways to make these. I just think they're amazing. So my tip is that you grab the designer paper pack, you grab the stamps, you grab the dies, and you just start stamping like we did here. We stamped right on top of the designer paper so that you already get some color and some texture and shading already. And then you can add a little shading like I did with the blending brushes. So do you see how these appear doesn't that appear a little more rounded than just a flat paper item? I think it does. I think it looks great. Okay, so that's step one. Stamp on the paper, die cut them, lay them out, and also die cut some of these pieces. This is the handle that goes like this at the top of the pot. Here's a couple examples. And you may be thinking, but wait, where'd that pot come from? So that is this tall one, and you can cut it anywhere 
or like I did here where it ran off the edge of the page and this one, it's fine. That's going to be the height of my pot now. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be the full height. The beauty of this is you can have a really tall one. You can have one that size. You can have one this size. Um, I think on... On these cards, I had one that was even shorter. And then, of course, you have this die, and you can even crop that one down. So you can have all these different sizes out of just the two stamps with their coordinating dies. Oh, Tammy, thank you. Oh, like, wait, there, I missed something here. What was this? Oh, hi, Anne. So you were talking amongst yourselves, watching you... From, oh, you're already here. I'm so excited that you're here for the weekend. I'm so excited. So excited that you are here. I'm going to see you tonight for bingo, right? <laughs> and yay, we are excited to see you. Thank you, Tammy. So that's step one. So stamp them, experiment, shade them, die cut them, put your pieces out. And now if you're in the age range that I am, pretend you're playing with Betsy McCall paper dolls. So any of you from the 60s and 70s, you're going to remember that. I want to show you something funny. You know how we we um, stamp or we die, die cut or cut a piece of designer paper and we're all set to use it and we turn it over to add glue and we say, whoa, look at that side. How pretty is that? So that's what happened with this pot. I turned it over to put glue on it and I said, well, that looks awesome. So you never know what'll happen, right? You have all these possibilities. And then these pieces are really fun because you can add them to the top or anywhere onto these pots if you want to have the handles. You can either put it on the front or you can put the pot on top of it so that you just see handles. Let me put it back on the white so you can see that. So see that? You can you can put it in the back. Maybe it would make more sense if it was blue. There. So you could have just blue handles showing, or you can have this piece on the top, and it gives it a completely different look. So all of these amazing, amazing possibilities of mixing and matching, cutting this in half, cutting it in smaller sections, layering, using the designer paper, using the shading. I mean, just wow, right? So I think on this one, I think I'm just going to randomly give it a snip like that. I like that a lot. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of glue and let's put this one on top of it. And now we just have a completely different looking pot. And you might, if you have really good eyes, you're going to notice right there and right there, a little teeny bit of the pot is sticking out. So I just take my snips at an angle like this and I snip those off of there. So there, look at that. Now we have another pot to use. And I'm just, I'm loving this one. I don't think I'm going to add one of these. Oh, I could put it behind. I, I just love this one like that. I love those two as is. I'm going to leave those. But this one, oh, and I had a, another thing I wanted to show you. Here's another thing. So on, on this stamp, I don't know which way is easy, easier to show you. You see how the bottom and the top of the pot have this solid, almost solid image. So I found something really cool that I did. This was fun. I'm going to take copper clay ink and I'm just going to ink, you know, just that top portion. Might need a little more, that top portion. And then for the bottom of that pot, I hope this turned out straight. Oh, it did. Look at that. You can add some interest to that and make it look a little more grounded or almost like maybe it's. Uh, narrower and there's a shadow. So I did that on a couple. I loved that idea. 
And let's see, what else could we do it to? Maybe, maybe this one. A oh, little more, a little higher. Without looking straight down on this, it's a little bit hard to see, but but you get the idea. Do you see how that just automatically gave that a different look? It looks like it has sort of the bottom part of that pot there. So that was kind of a fun idea. I think we could do that. What if we do it to the top of this one? I'm going to try and look down on it so it's crossing our fingers somewhat straight. Yep, look at that. Just a whole different look. I don't know. I think it's cool. So I just played and played and played, and I had so much fun mixing and matching and basically playing paper dolls with pots. Paper doll pots. I know. I figured that would be a really weird blog title, Paper Doll Pots. People would be like, she's really lost her marbles, hasn't she? So there's another one. I think those are... Should we put a topper thing on this one? Oh, that looks really good, doesn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just get these ready for a whole bunch of cards. And then hang with me because we'll make that fun backfold card. And just snip out those little, little corners that are showing there. Maybe no one would see those, but I would certainly know they're there and they would bother me. So there's that pot, that, those are ready. I'm, I love those as is. I'm not going to touch those. Maybe, I don't know. I think we might need a tall one. So I think we'll leave that one as is. Oh, I kind of like that. Let's do that. Let's do that. And then we'll just have all these pots ready to decorate our cards. What do you think? So for those of you who were like me, who were on the fence about this suite, what are you thinking now? Is this Does this inspire you? Thanks, Louise. <laughs> yeah, flower vases, coffee mugs. Yes, uh, exactly. Thank you, Pat. She says, I didn't like it in the catalog, but I love it now that I'm playing with it. Awesome. Oh, thank you. Marsha loves it. Bev says you make me almost like this set. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> oh, good. I see you're commenting. You all, okay, you are seeing the, the possibilities. Louise is warming up to it. Amy says it's helpful. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I am glad that you like it. I, I And thank you. I so appreciate your thumbs ups and your hearts. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, Louise says, there goes my budget. Well, yeah, the good news is, you know, it's around for the whole year. It's in the annual catalog. So that is the good news that you can get it at some point if you don't want to get it immediately. But anyway, I hope that shows you some really fun possibilities for making all these different pieces that you can use on your cards. So again, if you tuned in later, this is going to be a future blog post. This is a peekaboo card with these pieces. This one was on my blog a few days ago. Just a simple top fold with all these parts and pieces. And then this is what we're going to make now. So this is called a back fold card because this little flap folds back and then you open the card. Isn't this a cool fold? And I'll show you what inspired me while I was away on the Stampin' Up! trip. Our team, the Love to Stamp group, had an event. We do an event with each new catalog. It's an online event, so all of our members across the United States can participate. And Melanie Hawken was in charge of that event since I was gone. She organized it all. She got all the presenters together. She designed the projects, she made all the packets, she did all the mailings, she did the Zoom meetings, the Facebook Lives, everything. She was amazing. Thank you, Melanie. One of the presenters was Joanne Hewins, and she created this card, this backfold card, which I had never seen. So here's the backfold part. 
and then you open it and it was a birthday card from Joanne to me. Isn't this adorable? And as I watched, this is so funny, so true confessions here, as I watched the replay after I got home from our trip of the event, and I watched Joanne's presentation with this card, I was pausing it, and I was taking pictures of my computer of this card so I could figure out exactly and re and replicate it. And then a few days later, this card came in the mail from her for my birthday, and I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I actually have one. I'm so excited. I, it was like Christmas. I just love this card. So again, Joanne, thank you. So I was able to measure it and everything so that I could make a duplicate of the card. And if you want to make one, this is actually on my blog today, or you are welcome to take a screenshot. This is the cardstock base dimension, five and a half by seven and a half, and the two scoring dimensions. So if I open this up, like if I hold it this way, you can see that that's what, how this is. So it is five and a half by seven and a half scored twice, three and a quarter and six and a half. And it's not difficult, but I don't, it like was really bending my brain because it doesn't seem like this should turn out to be a regular four and a quarter by five and a half inch card, but it does. And I don't know why this was really bending my brain cells. <laughs> but this is on my blog if you want to pin it or uh, print it or whatever. So it's on my blog today. It'll be on my blog again tomorrow at pattystamps.com. So just take a piece of cardstock. And we, we know that we need a five and a half inch dimension. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut this in half. You could obviously make two at once. I'm just going to show you one. So you have your five and a half inch dimension, and then you need seven and a half this way. So you are going to have a little strip. Now you have the two scoring dimensions, three and a quarter. So remember, scoring blade, three and a quarter and six and a half. So very easy. I always recommend using your um, bone folder when you have a, a special fun fold card. So we're just going to score it in half. So now here you can see there's your quarter sheet. It's, it's a little bit magical. I don't know. I don't know why this was bending my brain. And then that other flap, you want to fold it backwards. Because remember, this is going to be our back fold. And that's it. Isn't this easy? Simple? Super easy. <laughs> that's all there is to that. But we'll decorate with a few layers here. I think we still have some time. So I'm wondering about... Um, you know what? I don't know that I've used this one yet. I'm wondering about using a piece of this. We'll see how it looks. I haven't used this one yet. So I was thinking about that. And then I want to go ahead and mat it. Probably with this deeper blue. So I, you know what? I didn't write down the matte layers. So let's measure and write it down because I know you all are going to want to know that. So if this is three and a quarter by five and a half, then so we need a matte layer at three by five and a quarter for the front. And I think I'm just going to do the white inside the same thing. So then white three and a quarter by no, sorry. I, I do, I know, I know math, three by five and a quarter. So the front, and then we'll also do one that's a quarter inch smaller. So two and three quarters by five. So if I did that right, this will work. If math hurts your brain, just don't worry about it and, and we'll get there. So five 
no, five and a quarter for the big one. Five and a quarter by three for the larger layer. And two and three quarters by five for this layer. Is this already five? Oh, it is. So I'll do two and three quarters this way. I know. For my math people, my non-math people, don't worry. Don't worry. And then the five inch, five inch, no, five, three by five and a quarter for the inside. Might as well do that while the trimmer's out. Now, if I did that right, oh, good Lord, hang on. That's my reminder to set up for the 11 o'clock usual um, live. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. I silenced my phone, but I forgot that alarms will still go on. Because, yes, I do have an alarm set for every Friday at 20 to 11 so that I don't forget to go live. Even after all these years, yes, I still have an alarm set for it. Because once in a while, I get busy with something, and then I panic, and I need to run up here and get everything set up. All right. I think that's pretty. I like that combo. You really can't go wrong with any combination in this designer series paper pack. It's just... I mean, <laughs> Julie says I thought that was my phone. <laughs> um, that pattern piece should pot. I'm not sure what that means, Robin. Okay, and then let's see. Should we put a piece here? I wonder if we just use the. Oh, wouldn't the blue be beautiful? Let's do the blue. So I'm going to cut that down to three quarters of an inch. And here's two tips for you. When you have a little piece and you're trying to make it even smaller, put one of these little post-it flags on there. Okay, I'm going to do it. Well, okay. Like I said, my brain is always 45 steps ahead. So let me slow down and say this, the second tip. First tip is use a little post-it flag to hold this. But what I was going to say was sometimes it's easier to scoot it over to the other side to see the three quarters of an inch or the half inch or the quarter inch. Okay, so I'm just going to hold it down right there. So I have scooted this over to the three quarter of an inch line on the other side and then I'm holding it down. And that's an easy way to take off just a little strip. And then, oh, it already is five and a quarter. Well, there we go. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. All righty. There we have it. And I do have a couple of circles already cut. I'm wondering about this piece to build our pots on. I, I don't want to do that one because it's the same pattern. And I don't want to use that because I didn't use, I went with the copper clay and the um, pecan pie. So I don't want to use that. So not that circle. I'm not sure that I want to use the blue. Maybe. Maybe the blue. Let's see what some of these look like. Oh, I want to use this beautiful pot. Definitely want to use that one. What else do I want to use? Maybe, maybe one of these. Maybe I do like the blue. I don't know. Maybe the blue is good. Maybe it needs to be lighter. 
Let me die cut a circle out of this piece real quick and see. Is that the next to the biggest? Oh no, it's the biggest circle. Oh, well then I have an idea. We'll layer them. Does your brain ever work in super warp speed like this, like me? Like you just can hardly think because there's so many ideas in your head? Wondering about that. That looks like a porthole. That looks funny. What about that? No, because then the brown pots won't. No, no, no. What about that? Does that look like a porthole? Does that look too funny? Kind of looks like a porthole. I don't know. I'll wait and see what you all think. Let's see. Blue on blue. <laughs> Polly says, yes, my brain's always going full speed. Yep, 50 directions. I know. I feel like my computer with all of the tabs open at once. Um... Blue on blue. Okay. Let's see. Was that this one? Blue on blue. Uh, I like that too. Oh, I like that too. Okay. Blue on blue. You are all correct. Bingo. Bingo, bingo. Now, tip. You've probably already figured this out, but of course you can't glue that whole circle down because then your card won't open. So you need to only put a, just a little bit of glue over here. Now what I did was I flipped it over so that I could see exactly. And I said, okay, my glue is just going to go right there. And then I flipped it back over and I put it down and I prayed that I wouldn't glue the card shut. <laughs> And I just realized one thing I should have done first. Uh, so I'll give you the tip so that you don't miss out on this opportunity. If you wanted to stamp, it might have been better to stamp before gluing the circles down, just in case it goes off the edge. I guess we could, we could put a little, we could do that. And then if it goes off the edge, it's okay. So we'll do that. But it might have just been easier had it not been glued down already. So I'm just thinking of something, something along those lines. I've already pre-cut this really pretty, it's kind of like a fern type of a piece. I think it's so pretty. So we can use the, the brown side, we can use the white side, you know, whatever we'd like on that. But I think that I'll just do a little bit of this stamped piece coming out of there. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball that. I think I'm just gonna do it in blue. And I'm only inking just up here so that I don't get this long stem going down here. So I'm just going to do like as if that were coming out of that pot on the left. And then I have this, this wheat looking one. And I just, I think I'm just going to stick with the blue. I just sort of want it. And I'm even going to stamp it off, kind of coming out of a, a middle one. Just a little, a little bit of background there. Just a little bit. It doesn't need to be a focal point. All these pretty pots. Look at that. 
I'm going to have fun making so many more cards. So do we want to have a white one? Uh-oh, did I, <laughs> did I just, was I using those? I think I just scooted them off on the side, didn't I? I didn't mean to. Something like, something like that, maybe. Oh, we don't need that anymore. Something to that effect, I think. You know what I'm going to do? Okay, this might be, might be, sound weird, but I think this is going to work. Okay, I'm just inking this in pecan pie, and I'm just going to stamp over it to give it a little bit of texture so it's not just white, white. Oh, 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 look at that. I love that. I love that. It's all about just playing and experimenting. It's kind of like when my son says, don't be afraid to click mom when I'm working on the computer. And it's, it's like, well, don't be afraid to just stamp on it or rip it in half or use part of it or whatever. Don't be afraid. I really, really, really love this pot a lot. And the middle one I'm going to pop up. So this one I'm just going to stick down. And then this one we will grab some foam adhesive. And look, even the back of this one is gorgeous. Wow, maybe we should even use that side. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to use this side. It it's maybe just just a tiny bit a tiny bit much, a little bit, maybe. Oh, I forgot to stick this piece in there. So we'll just um, I just snipped off with my fingernail the, um, the stem because that would have been too long since I already glued that down. And then, okay, I am going to have to pull this up a tiny bit to get it tucked under a little bit. So there we go. Isn't that amazing? So a little different, you know, colors. And here I had both of those fern things coming out of the middle pot. You can do it whatever you'd like. And then this thank you is in the set. That would be great down here. And then I will go ahead and decorate the inside in a similar fashion with one of these extra pots. But that is the back fold card and tips for making your earthen elegance pots. So tell me what you think. I just love this. It's it's the whole playing with the paper dolls part that I love. Thank you, Polly. Oh, a clear adhesive sheet to make them shiny. That would be amazing, Lillian. Um, thank you. I'm so glad that you love the palm frond. Thank you. Yes, not fern. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, thank you, everybody. I am so glad you enjoyed it. So glad you enjoyed it. Thank you, Tammy and Marsha. Thanks, Patricia, Nancy. Oh, good, Tammy. She said it was fun to watch. Thanks, Stacy. Thank you, everybody. All righty. So don't forget, this one was already on my blog a couple days ago. This peekaboo peekaboo fold with the same sort of supplies will be a future blog post and video and then back fold card will be on my blog tomorrow so that would be June 10th and I hope that you have a fantastic 
weekend. Here is my blog again. If you need more details, if you need to shop for these supplies, these are on my blog today. If you need a catalog, that link is there as well. If you need to order, the links are there as well. You're welcome, Tanya. You're welcome, everybody. Thanks, Lillian. She said, I love watching your creative process. Thank you so much, everybody. I will be reporting back after the um, event this weekend. I am so excited to, to see that. Oh, yes. That, okay, let me tell you this one tip. So hang on, because I actually have that same box, I believe. So there was a tip shared with me. I think it was Vandy that shared it. And she said, if you have an old tissue box that's used up, she said, here's a tip. You can take your dies and you can make beautiful pots. Look how beautiful that would be by die cutting up an old tissue box. And it also gives a little bit of um, depth and dimension and thickness to the pots. And I thought that was such a fun idea. And one of the tips she shared, I think, might have actually been this same box that I have right here in my craft room. So I thought that was such a fun idea. Thank you for that reminder. I had forgotten about that. <clears throat> Yes, Robin, I will be sharing about the soiree, and hopefully, if the signal is good, I will be doing a live right from our soiree with Sarah, and maybe one tonight from the bingo. It just depends how the signal is, because you know it's frustrating when there isn't a good signal. So um, I will see some of you tonight, some of you tomorrow at our events. Thank you so much if you were one of the ones that signed up. And then I will see the rest of you live next week for another Friday video. And I will see others of you just online in general. So thank you again for watching and for your support of my business. I truly appreciate you. And I will see you all soon. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.